Can you believe that sometimes? A company can treat one group like a loving baby and another like trash? While that sounds counterintuitive because the preparation and introduction process for a K-pop group would cost a fortune, many agencies are still said to follow this practice. Because, according to netizens, idols are just like products to companies. And when one product doesn't make profits, investing in another is more lucrative. Number 1. TXT vs BTS and Les Seraphim Officially debuting under HYBE, rather than any sub-branches of the company, many once predicted that TXT would soon make it just as big as their BTS brother. However, as time passed, many gradually realized that their anticipation could hardly come true. And a huge part of it came down to the fact that HYBE seemingly had lost interest in making the group their next big star. Things all started after news about TXT being bombarded and mobbed by Sasang fans at the airport surfaced on the internet more and more. In the past year or so, the group has struggled so much with Sisongs to the point that they just gave up at one point, awkwardly sitting still as if they were exhibits for obsessed fans to take pictures. Until now, there have still been only one or two managers being with TXT at dangerous places. And sadly, these managers not only couldn't protect the boys, but also did harm to them at some point as one manager was seen pushing Subin into a car, causing him to hit his head hard onto the roof. Besides doing nothing to physically protect TXT, HYBE also took no actions to prevent them from being sexually harassed on the internet. In January, Yeonjun was bombarded with lots of xenophobic, transphobic, and sexual remarks on Twitter. But HYBE just indifferently warned people to stop, and didn't even care if it would ever stop. Meanwhile, BTS is equipped with tons of bodyguards. So many that, when asked which K-pop group has the most bodyguards, Jung Sung Min and Yang Tae Il, two bodyguards working in the industry, immediately answered BTS without hesitation. According to Sung Min and Tae Il, there are at least 150 to 200 security staff working for BTS. As if these things weren't bad enough, HYBE was also said to mess up the promotion schedules of TXT, causing them to hardly ever win on music shows because their comeback clashed with so many digital monsters. The peak of this was that two of TXT's comebacks were somehow scheduled to overlap with BTS's Boys With Love and Butter, while HYBE only had two groups and one solo artist for their own company. What's even worse was that BTS wasn't even promoting this song domestically, and HYBE still arranged TXT's schedule to be like that. Many people expressed their confusion saying they don't even understand what HYBE was thinking when letting their two groups compete with each other like that. The third sign Moe has noticed is that TXT was treated like a black sheep just for HYBE to pour all the investment into Les Seraphim. This allegation came down to the fact that TXT has been overworked, despite just being a two-year-old group. In 2021 alone, they had already released a full album, a repackaged album, and a Japanese comeback. They also had to attend many variety shows, music shows, and countless personal content. Despite the packed schedule and the whopping amount of money generated for HYBE, fans noticed seemingly that the group could only do their content at the most basic places. In contrast, when Les Seraphim recorded their content most recently, some noticed that HYBE had rented two of the highest floors of an expensive building in Namsan for the girls to film. This immediately garnered negative reactions because, according to many, the money generated by TXT was being taken advantage of by a controversial group who had yet to even add profits to HYBE. Mo was also asked the company to also record TXT's content at such expensive places because that's what they deserved. However, there are still defending opinions, saying that netizens were being professional mourners in both cases. One, since Les Seraphim was a very potential girl group, and that's not even an assumption because their sales, as well as digital figures, said it all, it's natural for HYBE to pour money into the girls. About BTS's case, many, including some MOAs, said that it was incomparable to put on the scale what BTS got to receive and whether TXT should get the same thing because BTS made lots of money. Actually, an unimaginable amount of money. Enough for building the whole company. And thus, things they got must apparently be more than what a rookie like TXT could get. Plus, TXT was also provided with lots of opportunities to collaborate with Western artists, helping them promote better in the Western market. Thus, they said that some people should stop crying all over the place, because HYBE knows what is best for their artists. Number 2. WJSN vs. I If you just look at the way WJSN is managed and the bare minimum investment poured into the group over the past few years, it's certain that you wouldn't believe they're actually under the same roof with I. To some K-pop fans, it wasn't until WJSN's appearance on Queendom 2 that they knew about the group's existence. And despite being a very capable act managed by an above-average agency, Starship Entertainment, the group still had to struggle for six years straight before successfully telling people who they were. 
Many believe that the reason behind WJSN's failure came down to Starship Entertainment's ignorance. And besides the non-existent promotions, they also put up with an extremely hard life. The peak of the mistreatment was when Ujungs noticed WJSN had to constantly prepare for their birthday themselves. Well, as a K-pop act, this was a very important day and was an opportunity for the company to show appreciation for their artists. Because of the limited budget, most of the things WJSN had for their birthday were cheap props. And in one V-Live of Luda's birthday celebration, the props in the background even fell down mid-video, creating a pitiful atmosphere on an occasion that was supposed to be filled with utmost happiness. In total contrast, Starship has always treated Ive as their princess, and everything, from the costumes, makeup, hairstyles, to even the MVs and music quality, is top-notch. If you have followed K-pop for a while, you will know that one of the biggest reasons contributing to Ive's successes was their earworm music, and somehow, WJSN was never given any songs near that level to promote. The discrimination Starship did to WJSN compared to Ive was proven even clearer through the dorm of each group. While being a rookie of several months old, Ive was already given a whole luxurious apartment with a legit living room, big sofa, big TV, air purifiers, and four bedrooms, which meant that only two members had to share their space. Meanwhile, many fans found out that after the tiring schedule that would lead to nowhere, WJSN must return to a small dorm that was meant for a maximum of four people. Still, while most agreed that Starship Entertainment was treating WJSN like a black sheep and did the total opposite to Ive, Others believed the company was just giving what each group deserved. Reputation-wise, some claimed that the most famous WJSN's members couldn't maintain their heat for long. But with Ive, John Won Young and Yoo Chin have always been known to keep their name afloat with either the visuals or the skills. Plus, it's likely that the profits of WJSN as a whole were said to not even equal half the money Jung Won Young brought to Starship. So asking the company to treat them like they treat Ive was rather too much. Number 3. Lightsome vs. G-Idol Debuting amid the controversy of Soochin, many once predicted that the group would soon make it big and replace their seniors, because of the promising talents, visuals, and concept. However, time gradually proved the opposite, and probably for many of you here, this was the first time you've heard about the group, let alone knowing that they are under the same roof with a big act like G-Idol. While it's never explicitly said, most people could tell that their debut was purely disaster control for Soochin's scandal. It came at the perfect time to cover it up, so they did. Some would disagree with this theory, because who would spend a bunch of money debuting another group just to crisis manage the scandal of an old one? But considering the way Cube Entertainment easily let go of CLC after the massive successes of G-Idol really made people believe that they would do everything to ensure the largest source of profit. As if treating Lightsome as a scapegoat wasn't detrimental enough to the confidence and ego of the group, according to some summits, Cube even went on to act as if Lightsum didn't exist, barely poured investment into producing quality music for the girls, and didn't even bother producing group content for them on YouTube. In contrast, G-Idol was given all they needed to be a successful girl group, and ever since day one, Cube has always provided the budget for the girls to do whatever they want with their promotions. Each member was scheduled to have individual activities, and Yuki was even let to come back to China and promote there for a long time. When the members wanted to rest, Cube also let them be, and for a very long time, Minnie was allowed to just stay in Thailand, while Shukwa came back to Taiwan. That's why, on Reddit, some said Light Sum should have never debuted because they weren't treated properly, and many agreed that the group was such a pity. However, many said that the mistreatment theory wasn't true, and the failure of Light Sum came down to their using an overly saturated concept in K-pop. They were also unnecessarily crowded, and most importantly, didn't self-produce their music which was very different from the success formulas of all big acts under Cube Entertainment, like BTOB, Pentagon, and G-Idol. So do you think there's discrimination here, or people are making it up? Comment down below to share your thoughts with us. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Boss TV for more great content. Thank you for watching.